Kia ora, we own and operate a funeral home or funeral homes here in Onehunga and in Henderson uh, and we've been doing that since 2010 by ourselves and uh, we are enjoying it. Oh. Yes, yes we are. Hopefully. Many people would know us from the show The Casketeers and we're, we're actually where a lot of our mahi is, is shown where we look after our loved ones and their grieving families. When we were both uh, working up north for our local iwi, we sort of were attending um, a funeral every week, you know, someone we'd know or loved had died and so we'd go to so many funerals. And so the, the path I came to mind about, to my mind and my poor wife didn't really want to follow this path, mm -hmm. she was dragged and pulled into it, um, was, you know, who was taking care of all the, the tangi, the, the tupapuka around here, because one, there mustn't be a, many funeral homes up here in the far north, and two, they would have a lot of work for a long, long time. And so it was a business opportunity. I thought, let's, you know, we know our culture, we love what we do, let's take this up as a business and see what comes of it. Francis, yes, he did drag me along, and this is, at the time, wasn't my cup of tea. I uh, sort of grew love for the mahi after looking after, well, when he invited me to mahi to help him. And, I, you know, of course it was a bit sort of um, scary, but I had to overcome that because it wasn't about me, it was about um, the loved one and their families. And it wasn't until when families, you know, the feedback they, they give you, they tell you how wonderful their mum looks, or how wonderful their dad looked, and that's where I grew love or passion for the mahi, is when you see Fano. Um, happy and where they see the end result really. Mm. So we were approached by a production company and uh, I said uh, no for a, a long long time until my wife sort of um, twisted my arm and leg into saying yes. Is that yes. right darling? He, he wasn't a cameraman or just didn't feel comfortable with having cameras around um, uh, our tupapaku. Mm -hmm and Fano, so it was a bit it was a matter of you know how was rewording it and trying to probably sell the idea to him but which was good it was it was good because there were some things that I wasn't that I couldn't see that he could so there was a lot of tossing and turning to you know pros and cons about yeah. doing this and so we, 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 you know, tested our relationship, but yeah. um, that's, that's what makes you stronger is when you go through those things and you go, ah, yeah. And so uh, at the end of the day, we, you know, after a number of years of going through and asking the question, we finally said yes. At the time we were approached, I felt like the, the, the audience or the, the people who watched the TV or who, who was us, not quite ready for it. I think it was still too much. Mm. at the time, you know, when this idea came about many years ago. And so over the years, as times change, we've got, um, you know, Pauka Fakata, we've got Facebook, mm. we've got the news, and you see different images of snippets of funerals, and now I think it's a little bit more accepted, and hopefully far more accepted now. The response has been beautiful all around. Yes, we get the, the odd negative comment, but... The majority of the feedback has been wonderful and that's something we weren't expecting. No. Right? Initially when we watched this show three years ago on the TV, we were much sitting like this. I held her hand, she held mine and we watched the TV and we thought this is going live and this mm. is either going to make or break us. We never got to preview anything. We mm. still don't. It just comes on the TV mm. and we watch it when the public watch it. Mm. And so as we did that, we we saw it and um, I thought it would be a documentary more about and now Francis mm -hmm. puts the body in the car and now he drives to <laughs> you know what I mean like that and then all of a sudden I was dishing out fat pills we were doing exercises we were cleaning the lawn and I thought what the heck has this got to do with the documentary but after a couple of episodes you can see the format mm. and I think Whoever, or Susan actually, Susan mm. and Annabelle, you know, their whakaro and how they played the ups and downs, mm -hmm. perfect. Otherwise, it might be too taumaha, too taumaha, heavy. too heavy for everyone to watch. So I get it now, and um, we're used to the format. 
because they it's what I love about what well, enjoy I should say about filming is that they capture every important moment and at first it was a bit scary because it was how how was that going to be portrayed and and for us it was, it's about still um, acknowledging our Fano as well and I guess now we're, we're okay because we are putting ourselves out there and mocking each other, the banter, you know, who's, mm. who's stole the biscuit, it still goes, even now. So we're having to, you know, always topping up the biscuits. Um, but yeah. But we never um, whaka iti and make fun during funerals and during the whānau. Because mm. uh, that, for me, is what I love the most, mm. is the families, they get to have these memories for them to keep. Mm. When you're doing, you're making your, you know, arranging a funeral, there's lots of things you don't see, you don't hear, you go to a funeral, and because of the, your state of mind, you might have missed someone's or you might have mm. missed someone's tribute, joke, mm. laugh or song. And so this gives them that to keep mm. forever. And that's what I love about it. But we never, we never go and disrespect that part. We, it's always about each other, all the banter and all that sort of thing. <coughs> mm. <laughs> For me, I'm so grateful for a small mm. island in the world called Aotearoa Tera, <laughs> um, and for a small people, a Māori, Pacific Island people, all of us, that we're able to portray our country to the world. Mm. And we know it's working because we can't keep up with mm. the emails and the letters and the parcels that come from around the world. It's it's too much, and we've got someone to deal with that mm. now. And he, he tohu tera, that is an indication of our culture, mm. the language being spread around the world. Um, and that's the only way I can measure it is through the, the feedback we mm. get from people thanking us for saying for for, for sharing our culture. Mm. Uh, but I think there's something about death that can unite people. Mm. When when we heard the show had been picked up by Netflix, it was a surprise because we honestly didn't know that it would go that far. And actually. We didn't even know what Netflix was at the time. Not eh? at the time, no. no I mean, <laughs> it's, still just, it's a new Netflix, thing. You yeah. know? It wasn't until we got home we asked our kids, "Hey, what's Netflix?" And they go, "Oh, mum, it's this and that." So they're educating us, telling us how to get Netflix and mm. things like that. So <clears throat> the main thing was on Sky, so we could watch it. Yeah. Mm. Being on Netflix was, is overwhelming and a blessing, and you know, there's people from overseas that literally land. In New Zealand, they come straight from the airport, and they would show here. up, show up here, and they're like, "Oh, oh my God, this is, is so is this real! Is a real funeral home? Because the, they the think it's a studio, studio you know? Yeah. But it's, it's real, and they don't know that. So mm. they're just like, it's a real funeral home. They can see, oh, there, there are caskets mm -hmm. at the back. <laughs> Francis, and Kyle, yeah. you know. But Americans, they're way they're different to how we are. As you know, we're just like, oh. There's, there's that couple, but they they don't hold back. It's They're they, all in there and all over you. They know everyone's names. Mm. That's how but they're like, oh, I see you. And it could be anyone that walks up. It could be Denise will walk up. <laughs> there goes Denise. And they want to have a selfie with every staff member. How do I get a hold of this person? Can you please ring them up? Tell them that I'm here. <laughs> so they're at work today. They're looking after a family. <laughs> so... Yeah. So yes, yeah, so I think we're grateful that our, our, the show and that we live here, we're not in America no. because it'll be a, a different walking out the door there. But um, no, it's 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 good that it's uh, I, I, when we're filming and what we do. All I want to, what I'm thinking about is making sure that about we're re representing our our country and our people the best way we can. People ask, what's it actually like, you know, working with with deceased and loved ones and. You know, I, I tell everybody that's the best part of our, our mahi is actually to care for, to te our, our loved ones because when we're trying to deal with whānau, often we, we find that they're all fighting with each other. Hey, hon. Yep, um, and the question I get asked uh, is, did your leaf, why didn't your wife buy you a new <laughs> leaf blower? And when is the next season coming on Netflix? <laughs> Those are all the questions I get all the time. So, um, and and... No, my wife, she didn't buy me a new leaf Not blower. Yet. Oh. Oh, there Ooh. we go. <laughs> there we go. Let's hold her to it. Not yet. Um, and Stop. secondly, I don't know about Netflix and who does all of, you know, we, we don't know about that stuff. Mm. No. Although we get asked, is it scary a lot? But that's not strange. That's normal. Mm. That, that's an understandable question. Strange questions. Do you get hit, hit with traffic police, Emma? 
Yeah. Yeah, I, not publicly, but I think just our whanau, they'll be talking about it. And, and I'm always conscious of that too. I'm like, oh, what do we, oh, what do we see? Lips, oh, legs, oh, these are hands. <laughs> you know, I think, oh, someone's going to be ringing me, growling me. And I think, oh, my gosh, this is her zipper. And, uh, or, oh, her hair is not in place, you know, all that sort of stuff. But <laughs> hoi no, it is what it is because uh, it's real. Mm. And I do make mistakes. We, we absolutely do. Mm. And... Um, if I've made a mistake, we just tell them, Aroha mai kohe mato. we made a mistake. Um, and so we'll try to be, think about it a lot more carefully next time. It's one thing, you know, with the cameras, eh, following you, you and it's it's real, you can't, oh, let's do a take two again. No. It's, if you do a wrong, Rebel if you do a mistake, it, it is what it is. Mm. Mm. I think laughter is extremely important in our line of work. It keeps us sane, it keeps us together, it helps us with our own grief, because we grieve too. We don't want to, we really don't want to take any of it on, but we're human and it, mm -hmm. you do a... It's important. It's important to have a laugh. It's important to have that banter, although sometimes we don't like it with each other. Actually, most times we enjoy it, because if we're not giving each other that banter, then it's just not a normal day for us. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah, having the laugh every day for us is important. I mean, I, we could have done a real sad funeral, um, mm. and then Fiona will walk in and she'll be like, "What's wrong with you, you suck?" And you know what I mean? Just and like then that, just we're happy. Like, oh, back to normal again. She can th those sorts of things, and and the, you know the teasing that she gives us, mm. and we give her, brings us back into mm. line again. Oh, come by, yes. Mm. Don't, don't think about it too much. Don't take it on. It's not ours. Mm. We were there to Afi. Mm. Mm. It, is, it is a trait of Māori and Pacific Island people. We, we do have lots of laughs. And it's quite normal because we often finish that with a kai. Mm. We need to have lots of food, food to help us through that. Yep. We, you know, we tease each other. We, we, we do all of that. And it just brings us back into line and, and back into normality. Mm. And um, we wouldn't have it any other way. For me, just uh, it, it was actually this season. Um, oh, yeah. We never watch it live. We always watch <laughs> it a few days later or online, just yes. in private, just so we can... Because we're our worst own critics. And it's hard to watch yourself, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> and the, there was one where I put new curtains up in the, our chapel. And um, and I just thought how how what an idiot I was to the poor salesman. I told I bought these curtains and I loved them. Oh my goodness, they were so beautiful. Then they were ready to hang, and then he showed me them, and I said, "Those are so ugly." And I, I felt really bad, but I also <laughs> laughed, and I was like, "What a little kid!" You know, I was so just like, "Why did I do that?" But I guess this that's the benefit of seeing yourself. Of, you know, in third person, you're like, holy heck. But I had to laugh because I did sound like a, a little... He was going at him, man. Like, he was so going at him. And I'm like, listen to you. You're like a little kid. You're wasting our tamariki, you know? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> what do you think sense. of these curtains? He goes, oh, very nice. Like, no, they're ugly, yeah, hey. Like, hey, oh. they're ugly. And I felt sorry for the poor guy. Excuse my Indian um, thing. You know, he's Indian, but he's still a lovely man. But I didn't mean to... No. Um, you know, reenact the Indian um, mm. <laughs> I have to say, there were two funniest moments of them. You're right, it was this, this season. The funniest moment was watching ourselves on the bike. <laughs> I thought it was quite romantic. Oh, sorry, I'm still thinking it was so funny. Because, I mean, you, you made us face the mailman. Yeah, and I totally forgot about that scene. It was just the poor male man's going down the road. And he's like, go on, babe, hold on to me. And I knew he was serious because I had put my helmet on right then. I'm going, oh, this is terrible. <laughs> the thing is, my wife, she says I'm so predictable. Well, not today. Not on this clip. I was one out of the box that day. And, um, and you know, the, it was from the Cook Islands when we were together. And she was, I was in Rarotonga, she, in the scooters, and she put her arm around me. She goes, honey, this is so beautiful. Because I know she likes motorbikes and Harleys and all those things. And I was like, oh, well, I can <laughs> be like that. But I couldn't ride a big Harley and not, I couldn't even afford one. So I got a little scooter for $1,200. $1,200? $1, oh, well, really? what did I tell you? 2000 I had to make it sound better. You didn't even tell me how much it was. Let's not... <laughs> so, so anyway, so I got oh, her the scooter. Oh, coming out, Whanau. Yeah. There you go. 
And um, and I, I guess what that was about was just to, you know, show her that I can, you know, be rough and strong and, <clears throat> and like that. You know, the man that she, you know, the, the edgy, edginess is what I said. And so I don't regret that that was special to me. And the postman won, but her and I had two people and he only had one, so the bikes. <laughs> One of the freshest things that has happened was when his dye started running out of his hair. It was coming down his face at the funeral. <laughs> I tell you why it was fresh, because I love the people. And so my umbrella, I gave it to a man who didn't have an umbrella. Then the rain came down on my hair, <laughs> and then my hair started to leak. And then my Barbie looked at me and said, yeah, was like, what's wrong? She goes, and then I went like this, it was all black, and then it went <laughs> onto my shirt. So I had to leave the funeral and leave it in Barbie's hair because I was not going to be seen like that. He was like, oh my god. Sorry, Farno. grab the shovels, lower the body when you're ready, I've got to go. <laughs> There's a black coming down his face and then on. <laughs> mm, so now I just leave it grey. We would like the freshies to know, um, or feel encouraged really to be part of the funeral process and to if, if you are addressing your nanny come and be part of that mm. yeah because a lot of our elders are sadly dying now so it's up to the young mm. young generation like the freshies to take up that mantle now mm. and lead the people lead your family and so together you know we can make it happen I mean I know we've got life to live mm. but Often life ends at the most unsuspected times and suddenly. Um, and so for the young freshies, you know, get in there and start listening to our elders, mm -hmm. listening to the stories, the traditions, mm -hmm. why they do what they do. So when it comes to your time to lead your family, you got it sorted. Mm. I, I just want to say that um, whatever it is you're doing in your life to the freshies, you know, we've been there and done that. Mm. And it, it, you've got to be persistent. It, it might be you know, sports, whatever it is, academia, mm. uh, the trades, you've got to stick to it. Mm. And that's uh, through the highs and lows. I mean, we, we've, you know, life has nearly separated us. Mm. Life has parted us. But you have to stick to it and know that there's an end. Mm. Well, there's, there's light, not an end at the tunnel. So keep going. Be, be true in who you are. Um, remember where you come from. And hold on to those values that you've mm, been taught. And it's that that will guide you through your decisions in your life. Mm -hmm. mm. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.